For more than 100 years, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics has been the world's largest mathematics organization. As thousands of attendees gather to discover opportunities, technologies, and creative ideas that are working in classrooms around the country, NCTM TV is bringing it all right to your fingertips. Welcome back to day two of NCTM TV. I'm Matria Godfrey. Today we are turning the focus to the theme of this year's annual meeting, creating spaces for change through community. It starts with you. We kick things off today with our one-on-one -on -one with the 2023 Teacher of the Year. Hear how she's creating change by utilizing her new platform. What I keep coming back to is when we elevate one teacher's voice, we elevate the entire profession. We head to the Hill for Math Advocacy Day. Come along as teachers take a trip to Capitol Hill to advocate for change in federal policies to benefit mathematics education. And we pick up our tour across the country of those changing the game of mathematics education. We provide professional development for teachers and leaders focused on improving teaching practices to support the mathematical achievement and success of all students. There's a lot to cover on this second day and there are plenty of ways for you to watch. You can find the latest NCTM TV episodes on the TVs placed throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at our partner hotels, on the homepage of the NCTM website, and on our YouTube and X pages, formerly known as Twitter. As the 2023 National Teacher of the Year, Rebecca Peterson plans to use her platform to highlight all the good that's happening in education. And we are absolutely thrilled to have her here in studio with us today. Such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Well, congratulations. What an honor. What did it feel like to learn that you had been awarded as National Teacher of the Year? Yeah, it, w it was very surreal. It still is very <laughs> surreal. Um, you know, I, it's just not, you don't go into teaching for the awards. Um, but while there's so much sort of wrapped into a title like this, what I keep coming back to is when we elevate one teacher's voice, we elevate the entire profession, right? And um, I try to keep saying that I didn't win a competition, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just, I was just selected for a job and a year from now it'll be somebody else's turn to do the job. Yeah. Um, but this is just the honor of a lifetime to learn from teachers all over our country, mm -hmm. to celebrate their work and to highlight the beauty of this profession that affords so much creativity and autonomy and purpose. What a humble way to look at it. That's incredible. Um, you are giving your address today. Yeah. What can people expect? Yeah. So we'll be talking about how we create a connected mathematics classroom. So, you know, I, I'm optimistic that we're kind of through the worst of the COVID pandemic, but I do think that we are facing a new pandemic and that's the pandemic of loneliness. 45% um, of high school students report feeling consistently hopeless or depressed, like 45%, you know, and it's just these statistics that we're seeing are so sobering. Um, well, the science is really clear and connection is how we heal. And so we're going to be talking about trust acts that we can build, small, small acts we can do with our students that, um, that build that trust and trust builds connection and connection builds that healing. Incredible. You know, you are a very inspiring teacher in your own right, and you're very positive and very optimistic. How do you maintain that given all the challenges that teachers face these yeah. days? Yeah, you know, I, I'm very open that I, um, my first year of teaching high school, I was not sure I was going to make it. I really, truly had one foot out the door um, because this is hard work. Like, this is really hard work. And then very serendipitously, I stumbled upon this community blog called One Good Thing. And it was a collective of math teachers who live by the mantra, every day may not be good, but there's something good in every day. And about halfway through my first year of teaching high school, I went from reader of the blog to writer, and I started contributing to that blog and finding one good thing every day in my classroom and writing something, something good that happened. And... Um, you know, it shifted me and it changed the way I saw my classroom. I, it rewired my brain is what it did. Like it, it activated my reticular activating system, my brain's filtering system, right? So the more that I took the time to notice the good, the part of my brain that filtered the good expanded, right? And allowed me to see even more good. And I say often, like I, it's true, I didn't know how hard this job was gonna be, but it's also true, I didn't know how good 
it was going to be. And um, taking the time to notice the good really, um, really did allow me to see how beautiful this work is and gave me the ability to practice joy. And I think that joy helps us sus help sustain us in this work. And so we're going to be talking about that today as well, how we build that joy and resilience in, um, in work that is really beautiful, but also really hard. You mentioned you know, the loneliness factor that a lot of our students are facing and how that impacts them. How important is community also for teachers? I mean, how important is it for you to have your yeah, tribe? Yeah, it's so important. And, it, and, and we'll talk about that as well. I think the, the sort of the five connections I, I really think are important is teacher to student, right? Mm -hmm. Student to student, um, student to themselves, teacher to teacher, and then all of us to our communities. And so we have to really be intentional about finding these connections and building community absolutely with our students, right? But also with our fellow colleagues, because um, if we do this work alone, it's not sustainable, right? If we're trying to do this work alone, there's a design flaw. So finding our people and nurturing our colleagues, just like we nurture our students, to me, is, is the way forward. Great advice. Well, congratulations again. Such a worthy honor. Um, and best of luck during your address today. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Effective teaching starts at the top. The Teachers Development Group is a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving all students' mathematical understanding and achievement through meaningful, effective professional development for teachers and school leaders. Teachers Development Group is a nonprofit based in Portland, Oregon. We provide professional development for teachers and leaders focused on improving teaching practices to support the mathematical achievement and success of all students. We work with the teachers to help them think through their lessons and it's almost like we become a think partner for them so that they can bounce ideas off of us and we can think about together what does the research say about how children learn math. We see every student as a mathematician and being able to work with the teachers to ensure that every kid in their class is engaged. So when we think about the students who might be on the margins or might not always have a voice in the classroom, we wanna make sure that they are able to show their growth as well. One big way to initiate change is by heading to the Hill. NCTM leaders and math educators alike were on Capitol Hill meeting with lawmakers to explain how changes to federal policies can have a big impact in the classroom. NCTM on the Hill is a day that we coordinate with our NCTM annual in DC, where we have about 100 teachers come in. They get prepped on advocacy issues, we talk about the key pieces that we want our representatives and senators to know about to promote mathematics, teaching and learning and support for math teachers in policy and funding. The staff people that I met with were extremely receptive and we were able to make personal connections. We went to the same college, with one I went to the same high school. So just being able to connect on a human level really made a difference and uh, they were asking really genuine questions and really just interested in the NCTM platform. One of the most important things that research says is that a qualified teacher has a positive impact on student success. We need more qualified math teachers. And so our members represent that. And we need them to understand that we need more folks that know how to teach math, connect with kids, and can engage them so they can learn and be successful. Being in the classroom myself for the past 18 years, I wanna see like teachers continue to be supported and, um, and valued, and so just anything and everything that we can do to support teachers with, uh, with increase in funding and for increase in professional learning. Part of this work is training folks to go back and reach out to their state representatives because there's so many decisions happen there that we can do local work to support them.
The mission of BYU Math Education is to prepare professional, knowledgeable, and caring mathematics teachers. By educating teachers and engaging in research, the BYU program positively influences the broader mathematics education community to make an impact on the world. Here in our department, we feel like we have put together a world-class program in mathematics education to prepare future middle and high school mathematics teachers. What's innovative about our department, I think, is that we have built up so many classes that are not about math and not about teaching, but are about teaching math specifically. Something I love about this program is the emphasis on student discovery and task-based learning. I've never had a teacher that teaches the way that they're teaching us to teach, helping the kids understand the concepts rather than just like formulas. I worked as a research assistant for two of the professors. I feel like I got this really hyper-focused experience where I was able to make my own teaching better because of it. I think what we're doing in our program is really giving our students the opportunity and the tools to try to transform the teaching of mathematics across the United States or even across the world. Using high quality instructional materials requires changes in classroom teaching. The National Institute for Excellence in Teaching is showing a better way forward that blends the what to teach with the how to teach it. NIT is impacting 50,000 students in Jefferson Parish through our work with support and math curriculum. But even more importantly, we're supporting and empowering leaders to empower teachers. Jefferson Parish Schools is prioritizing high quality math curriculum because it is what is right for kids. It is what provides our kids with equitable opportunities to engage in grade level content. A strong math curriculum helps promote equity for students because it gives them the opportunity to engage in work at a conceptual level. What we want to do is be able to build critical thinkers for our future. As we are such a large district, NIET spends time with a small core group of our principals. And I really think this is what makes the partnership and our work with NIET in implementing new curriculum or high quality materials different than some of the work that we've done before. Edited by Krista Jackson, the Powerful Mathematicians Who Change the World book series centers on mathematicians that we typically don't learn about in school. Krista is here in studio with more on how these books are helping everyone realize their own mathematical brilliance. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Well, thank you for bringing your books. This is incredible. Congratulations first. Can you talk a little bit about the series, where this idea came from? Yes, yeah, so we typically hear about Pythagoras as well as Gauss and Einstein and da Vinci in our mathematics classes, but we don't hear about these minoritized mathematicians and the powerful work that they're doing. So to understand the different works that they are contributing as well as giving our scholars a chance to see themselves as learners and doers of mathematics and to also see that there are others that look like them, have the same capabilities of them, and to see themselves portraying in that particular cause. So this brought about the Powerful Mathematicians Who Changed the World book series because representation matters. I like to see people that look like me, just like our scholars like to see people that look like them. And if people have disabilities, just like Kathleen Orlinshaw has impairment, to, there, she's, but she's a mathematician and world renowned, but we don't hear about these types of mathematicians in the mathematics class. So this book series is brought about so that we can allow our scholars to learn about other mathematicians and the powerful work that they're doing so they can also see themselves being represented as a mathematician as well. You are so right. The representation is so important. How do you feel this series is broadening the NCTM audience? It truly is broadening the NCTM audience. Typically, NCTM has books primarily for educators, but this book series is the first of its kind. It is written with the children in mind, the youth in mind, so they are centered on these mathematicians and their contributions through a storyline plot. So it's an actually fictitious story, but the contributions and the mathematicians are realistic. 
and because it's really centered with the children and the youth in mind, it's an actual children's book and a, a novella or a book that really gets the scholars interested in the mathematician and the mathematics contributions as well. But it's not just for children, but it's for educators, parents, etc. because this is reaching all ages from birth all the way up to 109 years old. <laughs> And it Everyone. provides exactly, and it provides resources for educators, parents, and teachers as they're reading the books to really incorporate with the scholars and their children as well. Now you've brought um, some of the books that are already in print yes. here with you today, but this is just the first round. Exactly. More are on the way. Talk about yes. that. Yes. Yes. So the powerful mathematicians who changed the world book series is going to be a total of thirteen books, and really, really excited about that. And it's really geared for a pre-K-2. So in the pre-K-2 series, there'll be a total of three books. In the grades three to five series, there'll be a total of three books, <laughs> six okay. to eight, three books, and so on and so forth. And then the one book that's outstanding is The Powerful Mathematicians Who Changed the World from A to Z. So each letter of the alphabet is represented by one of those mathematicians and their contributions. You know, I would imagine that your fellow um, teachers, you know, and your fellow mathematicians and educators that the reaction has been incredible. If they would have said, why wasn't this done a long time ago? Exactly. Is that what you're hearing? Exactly. Yes, they're so excited to see that, wow, this is amazing. My children would love this, and I can't wait to read this to my scholars, as well as get these for my nieces right. and my nephews, as well as my grandkids, too. Great holiday gifts. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, where can people get their hands on one right now? These are, if you're here at the NCTM conference, they're in the bookstore, but you can also order them online through the NCTM website. Well, they are absolutely wonderful, clearly very well needed. Congratulations. Thank and we you. look so forward much. to the next round. Thank you. Thank really you. excited about this. Turning now to a wonderful nonprofit helping millions of children around the globe with their math skills through a unique AI tutor called Flexi. CK12's mission is to help all students get really good quality education so that they can actively participate in the knowledge-based economy. We came up with Flexbooks, interactive, customizable books that are digital. Flexi, our tutor, is built upon certain philosophies that will help you deduce the answer yourself. It connects what we learn online and in class with what's applicable in the real world. Flexbooks are customizable playlist of concepts that are interactive, multimodality, and they are evergreen. You can customize it to any student's need and for any demographic, any standards, whatever your requirements are. One of the strengths of CK12 is the ability to move from where we are to the next generation so that we can incorporate very powerful tools that can help in educating and learning. Whether it's through NCTM publications or professional development services or this annual meeting, the NCTM staff is always very hard at work for you. And someone who knows that firsthand is Shonda Long, and she is here with us in studio today. Pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you as well. I'm happy to be here. Well, I know you guys have been very hard at work putting this meeting together. You know, a lot of time and a lot of energy, a lot of planning goes into it. How does it feel to see everything come to fruition? Well, the fact that so much of this meeting is planned by members who volunteer hours of their time planning the meeting, um, is, it's really exciting to see. Um, and, you know, we're able to provide this space for mathematics educators to come together and collaborate and share knowledge in order to provide better mathematical experiences for each and every student is very exciting. And walking around and seeing the enthusiasm from the teachers, it's, it's just wonderful. It just feels good. You mentioned that you know, it's a combination of both staff and volunteers that make this meeting happen. What kind of work goes on behind the scenes? The volunteers are selected two years out and we put together a program committee who reviews over 800 submissions in order to select a program that has a diverse 
selection of speakers and content um, so that we can meet the needs of various educators. Um, the staff, they come together to make sure that we can implement this program. The staff comes together and provides support to bring the program to life. Um, and the staff involves, we involved a lot of different departments. You would think, you know, at NCTM it's just math educators, but we have a marketing department, a membership department, conference services, finance, med, professional development, classroom resources. We all come together uh, to work on the program to make sure it's the best, we can offer the best experience for our members. Lots of moving parts. Lots of moving parts. <laughs> All right, so where can NCTM members go if they're watching this right now and they're thinking, hey, I'd really like to be a volunteer for the next conference that I guess at this point is two years down the road. <laughs> yes, so if you go to NCTM Central, which is in the exhibit hall, you can get more information about our upcoming events. You can also go online and there's a link to be a volunteer. So you can fill that out and you can volunteer to work on the program or some of the other programs that we have available. And I'm sure you're always looking for wonderful volunteers. Always looking for volunteers. They're what makes our organization great. Thank you so much for your time today. And thank you and the volunteers for all of your hard work. Appreciate it. Thanks. Turk is a nonprofit made up of teams of math and science education and research experts whose work is designed to instill a desire for lifelong learning. Let's see how they are accomplishing just that. I would recommend Visualized Teaching Program to other schools because it's changed me as an educator. I feel like I've taken the pressure off myself to always be the one that's leading the classroom and allowing my students to engage in conversation and own their learning. Kids come from diverse backgrounds and some kids come from a family who was just not good in math. And so when they come in, they already are defeated before they even begin the first problem. And something like this proves to students that they can. It shows them that, yes, you can be wrong, but let's process through it and see, can we justify it? It was very exciting for me to hear coaches who said, I want my teachers to ask the questions. I don't want to be the one telling them what to do. And that's what we really want to do, is to empower people to feel that they can ask these questions and that their opinions are valued and valuable. That does it here for day two of NCTM TV. We've still got one more thrilling third day to come, but remember, if you missed any part of today's program, you can always find the latest NCTM TV episodes on the TVs placed throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at our partner hotels, on the homepage of the NCTM website, and on our YouTube and X pages, formerly known as Twitter. Thanks so much for joining us here on NCTM TV. We will see you right back here tomorrow for our final day together. Go have a great one.